Hello, hello, Edris Oliveira here for DNNHero.com. I have with me Scott Wilkinson. Scott, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Perfect. Okay, so today we have a variety show here and to share with you guys. No, I mean, there's not much going on this past, you know, this end in August. Um, so we have a car show today. Scott, how, what can you tell us about this, those cars? Yeah, well... Uh... Yeah, I, a couple of years ago, uh, I took it on as a personal hobby, a personal project, uh, was to uh, build an electric car. And this was before really there was production models out there like the you know Chevy Volt and the Nissan Leaf. And um, I wanted to, I wanted my own electric car, but I I couldn't afford one, so I built one myself. And what I did was I I, I put together this. This is actually, um, can you see the screen? Is it up there? Uh, it's a it's it's a 70s Triumph Spitfire. It's a British car, and um, I converted it fully to all all battery powered. It's all electric, and uh, you can see a couple pictures of it here. And I've got probably more on my Facebook page. If some of some of our subscribers, I think, are on my Facebook as well. But uh, yeah, it, was, it took me about two and a half years. I worked a couple extra jobs to, to come up with the money. And it's a uh, it's uh, lithium ion batteries and a, a DC electric motor and it's got about a 50 mile range and it's a blast to drive. So um, yeah, it's 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 uh, I take it to car shows and I usually wear this shirt here to represent. You know what? We should sue Elon Musk then. No, <laughs> it was my idea. It yeah. was your idea. You know, Tesla <laughs> is kicking ass there, and you know you are. The owner of the idea, you know. I, I should say that when I started building this, Tesla did have their car. It wasn't that they didn't have the sedan out, but they had the the hundred and twenty thousand dollar Roadster, you know, which obviously was a little out of my price range. But but yeah, <laughs> very good alternative. Okay, so so again, this is this is just to be honest, guys. This is just a filler, so you can have more juice going on, you know, for this month. Yeah, maybe we'll. I'll show more pictures of me at car shows or something like that going forward. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to those. Okay, okay. So now let's go to the DNN stuff again. Still keeping up the topic of a variety show, but uh, now a little bit more focused on on our turf. You know. Uh, so as I said at the beginning, there's not much going on in August. Uh, this past August now, but. Let's see. Let's see what we have there. So uh, there were two hangouts. There were two Dinian hangouts. Um, the first one was on August nineteenth, and uh, they were introducing this module. It's an open source module called Portal Keeper. It does a lot of stuff. Uh, it's called Portal Keeper. Yeah, from Artisy. Is that the name of the Arisis? Yeah, uh, Aris, Aris, or something close to that. It's a French organization. Mm -hmm. um, I've watched a little bit of the of the talk there. It's 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 more of a technical uh, module. It does a lot. It, it looks like a, a Swiss knife type of thing because it, it does a lot of stuff. Um, it does things like. Um, uh, help on preventing uh, um, a, a denial of, of, of service attack. Uh, it, it does, it, it's hard for me to pinpoint what it does exactly. So uh, if you are more in technically inclined, if you may need to do some redirects on your website, um, check it out, check it out. You may find some useful use case for you. I would hope that they would have focused more on specific use cases um, they went on and on describing each feature of the of the module again it seems to be a great module i have not used it before but again if you are more technically inclined i would really recommend that you have a look at that again all links will be posted in the video post mm -hmm. and it's on github it's open source right i think it's it's on complex oh it's on complex okay and the yeah i don't see the source code here i just see the install so it i thought yeah hey, i thought maybe that's where i saw it but i, I kind of sworn i saw it on github maybe i'll uh 
look at that while you're talking. Yeah, so so again, I see the installation here, not the source code, so maybe the source code is not available. But but again, check it out uh, on the Hangout. You're gonna have a pretty clear understanding of what it can do once you go through it. But again, more technically inclined, I would, I would think so. Uh, there was also another Hangout last uh, this just just two days ago on the twenty seventh. Uh, this was about. This was a, a hangout just between um, Will Stroh and uh, Joe Brickman. They were talking about the source code of DNN, how to use it, how to open it, um, you know, how to do a lot of stuff with the source code, how to understand it. Because again, it may be uh, a little bit of a complex task to if you want to get the source code and I don't know, do some changes. Not not so much do, do some changes, but understand what's going on there. So again, a very comprehensive. Uh, I would say tutorial uh, done by those two guys and actually a very interesting complement addition to what I have done uh, a few months back which I went through the source code and show how, how you could open up on Visual Studio, how you could compile, how you could find you know uh, API code to use as a reference for your own code. So again a, a very very uh, would, would go very well together with the material that I have uh, done a few months ago. Um, so again, check it out that uh, other Hangout. Um, in terms of releases uh, this past month, we had, we have, we have had uh, a new one, a beta version. Yeah, 742. I have it up here, the, the article Joe wrote. Exactly, that's the one that I have here open as well. So there's a small article here. The major uh, highlight really is the fact that they have now incorporated the ability to do upgrades from beta versions to, uh, you know, so you, you, don't, you don't need to reinstall the whole thing if you want to just upgrade to the to the final version of that release. So again, in a lot of, of, of uh, minor fixes or, you know, quite, quite, a, quite a, a list here. It seems to focus on, um, there are a few performance things. I think one actually was a, a JIRA ticket that I opened. I believe it's this one about the user info.social was not correctly applying a read write lock. Um, it's very technical, but basically what was happening was we had some clients that were running high volume uh, sites, DNN sites, and were experiencing issues where at, at, where they would just get a, occasionally would just get like one of those yellow screens or, or something would go, go wrong. And they, we see these things in the event log about locking. And what it was is there's a caching layer that you know, when, whenever your users are loaded, you could have tens of thousands of users, so there's, they're cached in a way. And um, I guess what was happening was when, when the site, the applica application pool would restart, and some people, they have uh, a sudden application pool restarts because of errors. I don't know if people know this, but there is a way in IAS, in fact, I think it's mostly a default setting where after X number of exceptions on your website, of unhandled exceptions, the application pool will just recycle itself. Anytime the application pool will recycle, they would see these errors about these locks, and what it was was the next user, uh, the next user that would hit the website where it would access any, any user data, which is almost every page, right, would access what you know user roles or what whatever it might be they were getting locking issues because one user would attempt to refresh this cache which is this dictionary and another would attempt to do it and um, they would both do it at the same time and so they I, I think somebody checked in an issue uh, a fix for that and I'm hoping that that fixes that scalability problem got it okay okay yeah so so again I think that that as you're saying that uh might have been uh, handled by by this release yeah i think so i think it was when i looked at the jira i think it was fixed for this release so looking forward to that and um uh, another one i think affected me and we'll talk a little bit later about my recommendation was this uh web api method att attributes were not working in windows authentication 
uh, actually found this this issue, and I'll talk about it a little bit later when we start talking about this tool, my recommendation, and uh, and how this actually uh, or th this didn't fix the problem, but I had to go get around it by removing Windows authentication. Um, from the IAS settings. Got it. Okay. Okay. So you you mentioned that in in a in a bit. So yeah. so that was seven four two. Um, the the final release should be coming up in September very shortly. Uh, that's about it in terms of what I have seen in the community lately. Uh, just yesterday. I have recorded an interview with Chris Wiley from, and I, let me open the DNN store page, from Accord LMS. So it was a, a very good interview, uh, a bit a bit of a long interview, but very good one. We talked about, you know, the state of e-learning solutions on the marketplace and his solution as well, which is attached to DNN because it's based on the DNN platform, the fact that uh, a lot of his users don't even know that, uh, or don't even, let me put it this way, don't even care that they are using DNN because they are selling this LMS solution, this learning management system, and which is running on top of DNN, you know? So uh, again, that's, that's his product and we spoke, we discussed a lot about his product and e-learning in general. So I'll be publishing this on Tuesday uh, next week, uh, which is, uh, it's what, uh, September 1st. Perfect. Okay. So that was the interview. Um, now, now I've, uh, okay. So let, 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 let put this the right way. I'm not going to say the person's name, but every month I send out renewal emails just letting people know that hey your subscription to dnn hero is gonna be renewed very soon and i hope that you have enjoyed your subscription so far and i hope to see you you know to uh, to have you around for another year and i asked for the feedback i asked for some uh some some feedback and this person wrote me back and say you know what love what you're doing love what you guys do there but and then the person says my only complaint would be that your tutorial videos are becoming quite rare. That's for that's for me. And I said, mm, okay, you know what? The person is right. Because it had been about five months since last uh, video that I have um, created, last video tutorial that I have created. And I said, oh, okay, so it's good to have uh, my butt kicked here and there. And that was... A nice way from this person again i'm not telling the person's name just because and, and i just like to say that was me <laughs> <laughs> it's not scott say come on addison help me out here <laughs> uh so again i i haven't asked the person uh authorization to say uh the name so i'm just stating the facts so the fact was that it has been a bit uh a while since last time that I have produced the video and I decided to you know get to man up and be back on the job so so here's what I'm what I have done already not what I'll be doing I've done already I've started already and I'll be carrying this this initiative forward and that's that's where I'm stating my commitments in front of you guys you know so uh the first one that I have released I'm gonna Okay, let me step back here. Um, I decided to do a refresher on the DNN 7.4 uh, series because the last big, you know, start to finish series that I had done was not DNN 6. So I said, you know what? Because DNN 7.4 seems to be the, 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 the major last release on the DNN 7 series, even, even if they do a DNN 7.5, but again, I'll be I'll be well we would be well covered if I cover well the DNN 74. Uh, so I decided to do four courses: DNN 74 Fundamentals, Intermediate, Advanced, and Mastery. So I'm going out. So in the course of the next two to three months, 
every weekend, every week, I'll be releasing a little bit uh, on those on those courses. So I'm pretty much done with the fundamentals, which took me about an hour and a half of recording. Just to give you uh, a little bit of a perspective here, each hour of recording that at least my case, I don't know yours, Scott, I mean, you can you can you can tell that from your side. But for my case, each more or less each hour of recording takes me about five hours of work from prep to recording time to editing time. So again, each hour more or less equates to five to six hours of work. So I have put uh, forward that so far an hour and a half, which is covering the fundamentals. And again, intermediate will be next, advanced and mastery. And that's where my focus, my personal focus on the NN Hero and my commitment to you on the NN Hero will be in the next few months. Now, once the NN8 gets released, then I will do the same four tracks for the NN8 as well. And that's again, my commitment here, I'm recording this. You, you, can, you can call me on that if by any chance I'm not delivering on that, okay? So, and again, the first set is there. Uh, Scott, any put there? With regard to my next set? I don't know, whatever you want to say, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, I was gonna say, yeah, you're saying five to six, I think mine might be eight to 10 hours per one hour of recording, because I have to uh, pretty much build a new code project, test it, vet it to make sure, you know. But yeah, it is it is difficult. It's not easy, you know. Um, it seems may I don't know if people think it seems easy for us to just, you know, chat in front of a, um, you know, screen recorder for a little while and and then post it on the internet. But you know, it really a lot of thought and research does have to go into it. So, <laughs> yeah. But I will say that um, I have identified my next set, and it's been a while for me too. I think my last one was in June right after the conference that, that was put up. Um, uh, my next one is going to be an Angular, an advanced Angular, because I've seen more um, Angular, uh, I guess, uh, interest and in questions on our forums. So um, it, this next one's going to be sort of a best practice, I guess. I, I figure out a way to take the, the bootstrapping that um, uh, what's uh, Daniel Mettler with Too Sexy Content there, I don't know if people know this, but Too Sexy Content is an open source project. And I figured out how to adapt their uh, Angular bootstrapping for how they do it uh, to a more generalized mod for our modules, uh, which is pretty cool. It'll, ha it'll help you out, I think, people out a lot, especially with doing uh, modules where you have to have multiple instances on a page and they all have to work correctly together. Um, you know, and other best practices like removing dollar sign scope that I learned over the, the you know, spring, and, um, and, and, and using directives to encapsulate code. So that's going to be really good. That will be out in September. Again, hoping to that <laughs> because uh, it's, been a, it's been a couple months since, since I put out one, but that will be in September. So I think DNN Hero is going to be ro roaring forward in the fall. So, um, you know. Re-up your your subscription, and not to mention that uh, I know the revised release of DNN eight. I, I really, you know, you were mentioning maybe a possible seven point five. I doubt it. I think it's going to go seven four two dot something. A couple, maybe another revision number. But if if eight is going to drop in October now is the new date for that. Uh, you know, and seven four two is going to be out in September. I don't see them doing anything else until that until 8. So 8's coming out. We're going to do more tutorials on 8, you know, so in order to be ready for it, you need to re-up your subscription. So, uh, One thing that I want to point, uh, Scott, is that most likely DNN 7, 4, or whatever version they come up with, will we still be supported and, up, and, and updated for, I, I tend to think that for years to come. You know, I, I saw I saw a post from from um, Peter Donker, and he mentioned that he mentioned that most likely DNN seven, let's put it seven X, will be there for a while, for really for well, a while. No. Uh, again, remember that was when they were talking that DNN eight would be the V next. DNN eight is not the V next. 
you know what I mean? DNN8 is still the same platform. They're just adding support for MVC. So I don't, I, I, I don't know about that. I think what it's going to be is more like the transition from 6 to 7, where there's a few more minor releases of 6 during the time 7 is released. But again, DNN8 now is not a, the breaking change vNext that we thought that they were talking about last year. DNN8 is simply the next version with MVC support, but it still supports all the, the, uh, the web forms functionality. You know what I'm saying? So this will be, I think, the, a similar transition that 7 was from 6 to 7, that there will be a, uh, security patches for DNN6 for a couple months. Um, but yeah, like when they, whenever they do the actual vNext, where it's a completely re, uh, a ground up uh, MVC build, where it's a complete um, departure, then yeah, th that's the the case. But DNN8 now is just a, a, a an upgrade, uh, you know, an upgrade. I see. I see. Okay. 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 I. I... It gets confusing because we've <laughs> there's so much talk of of DNN8 being vNext last year that we it's hard to get that back out of our head okay okay so that makes sense that makes sense and yeah if that's the case then most likely again dnn 74 will just linger a little bit and yes. it, it won't be pushed too much forward anymore probably not but again dnn 8 is a big step it's kind of like 7 was a big step because there's there's a lot of new uh, you know, obviously MVC development, we need to do more on that. Um, uh, the, uh, what was the other one? The, um, the, the uh, single page, SPA, SPA, uh, we need to do more on that. I mean, there's, there's a lot of new stuff for, from a development perspective as well as administration and management and new front end. So, I mean, we've got plenty of material coming. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so you guys, uh, you know, we confessed our sins. We committed to get better and again, looking forward to be uh, pumping out content um, as frequently as, as, as possible, as, as frequently as I can. And again, for the next few months, you're going to see a lot of series uh, from myself personally, some stuff from, from Scott as well, but that's it. Okay, so last stretch of our chat here, tip of the month. So uh, Scott has set one aside, I set one aside as well. Let me start with mine here so I can then flip over to Scott's screen. So maybe some of you already know that. Actually, I'm going to cheat a little bit on this tip of the month because the idea of the tip of the month is something that uh, you that we do and we want to share that with you. This tip here, I do not, I do not uh, use that at all at this point. I just know that there are a lot of people using that and I want to get to use this as well. So I decided to share in any case. Um, you may have heard about FD. If this, then that. This is a nice service that they call, that they have recipes. And a recipe is nothing more, nothing less than if this happened, if, I'll give an example. If, I send an email, create an Evernote note for me. Or if I post a photo to Instagram, save that photo on uh, Dropbox. So there are a lot, a lot of recipes available on Ifty. And again, you can work with things like G to automate those, those, um, those recipes with Gmail, Evernote, Twitter, Dropbox, Google Drive, even integration with a uh, web phone system as well, Facebook, Instagram, iOS photos, Android stuff as well. So again, a lot of recipes, a lot of automation that you can accomplish by using FD.com. One sample, one example here, which in a way inspired me to bring this tip forward is this post from um, Ernst Peter Taminga, and he is showing how to use FT to automate community uh, community uh, blog posts to automate to your Twitter feed, 
so it will do a, a post automatically to Twitter uh, whenever there is a new community uh, blog post on DNN. So again, it's using FT and it's scribed here on this uh, blog post that I'm, I'm highlighting. Again, the link will be available. So again, give it a try. I will be giving a try shortly on FT.com as well. That's it for me. Uh, Scott, what's your tip? Let's see if I can. So there was a, a blog post in January, which I know it was a little while ago, January this year. Um, and it's from Bruce Chapman. It's called Identifying and Removing Spam User Account Registrations from a DNN Site. Now, last year when there was this rash of spam, I think it was last year, right? Um, you know, Addison did a, an initial um, video on how to stop it. I did a subsequent uh, video from a development perspective, how to use Google reCAPTCHA to, to, to create an absolute bulletproof registration in a very easy way. And again, that stops spam. Um, so we covered pretty well on DN and Hero how to stop spam or prevent it. But uh, I had an opportunity with uh, one of our clients who we actually, and I actually implemented the, the custom registration with the Google reCAPTCHA just exactly, in fact, I think this was probably the inspiration for my video last year, but the client held off on us doing cleanup because they just weren't sure they were ready or whatever. Then they decided, hey, um, I, I think it's going to be a performance benefit. We have over 60,000 spam users in our database. And actually, there were a few performance issues that were fixed by DNN with regard to high levels of, of users and that actually causing certain admin features to not even work. And a lot of those were fixed in 7.3, 7.4. But, um, but nevertheless, there's a lot of features that load users into lists um, and, and all that stuff where having a lot of users can be, especially ones that aren't even real users, can be a performance problem. So they decided to have me clean them up. So what I did was I read this article here this from Bruce Chapman, um, and I, the first part of it I don't care about. I you know I you know I know how to identify them, but you can you can read how to do that. Um, but again, identifying them, he's got a few queries on how you can do that. Mainly identifying them on you know they're they're in a certain date range. All these came at one time. You can probably be sure that they're spam. And then once you identify them, then you run a simple update statement. And this update statement, um, did he even identify that? Does he have this here or somewhere? Um, yeah, so the first query for doing an update, basically you update two tables once you've identified this user. And it's really just updating the is deleted flag on the user table as well as I think on the user portals ta table. So as simple as that. Well, now that update doesn't do anything. It just logically marks them as deleted, but they're still 60-some thousand users in the database. So then what we needed was a tool to be able to delete them. Now, why do we need this tool? Well, if you mark tens of thousands of users for deletion and you go to the user account screen and it has the, them, you know, you, you've probably seen it when you logically delete a user and initially it just has them crossed out, and then there's this big button on the bottom that says, to remove deleted users. Well, the problem with that is it, it's, not, it's not set up for scalability. If you click that button and you've got 60,000 users, even 10,000 users logically deleted, it will just, the process will hang. It won't actually delete them. The reason is because it's a very intense process. There's about a half dozen tables that the user data is in. Um, you know, use the, not just the users and their password, but the user portals, the user permissions, all that stuff, as well as on the file system. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but there's user folders on the portals under, under there. So there's, you know, tens of thousands of folders that have to get deleted. That's a very slow operation. So in order to actually get this done, uh, Bruce built a console application and a plugin. So you, what you could do is on this article, you can download the, there's two things to download. There's a, a, an, an extension in DNN, which is basically a class library uh, that sets up a web service call. So it just creates a web service for you. You install that as you would a normal module. And then there's a console application. You can see on my screen that this is a, a, a look at it. So this console application connects to the DNN service API that got created from the extension. 
and it takes care of the deleting for you. And the way it does it is, is you can um, delete users in bulk. So, in, 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 I'm sorry, in, in bulk, but in batches. And the reason he, he designed it this way, not only in batches, but the, you could also put a, a, a configurable um, uh, number of seconds between the batches. He did it this way because on a production website, and in fact, when I used it on the production website, it took almost 24 hours to delete all 60,000 users. The reason it does it and slowly in batches is, is in order it's do it on a production website, but not you consume all the resources and affect the actual performance of the website. So while this was running in the background on the server, the website operated perfectly fine. I mean, it was very quick and, and it worked perfectly fine. And after about 24 hours of this running, all the users um, got cleaned up. Very good, very good. Yeah, I've noticed that uh, that hanging problem when you, when because we have cleaned up a bunch of sites with uh, with uh, spam users. So yeah, that was a problem. I have never come across this article here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, and I've built scripts. I th I'm sure you have too for DeskPal and things like that. I've built scripts that delete the users in the database that run the store procs and and make sure all the tables are cleaned up. Uh, but but the other part of it is to delete the user folders on the file system as well. Uh, but this takes care of all that for you. And again, you can run it in the background on the server. You can run it remotely as well. You can run it from your own machine uh, as long as you have access to the to the anonymous web uh, web uh, uh, you know the the web API on the on the end server. Um, I will mention that this tool did not actually work at first for me. And um, going back to the what's being fixed in 742 with, with regard to web API and Windows authentication, uh, this tool did not work because it's, a, it's connecting through an anonymous API um, and uh, it, it, it from externally, right? You know, it's a, it's a console application. It doesn't run within the website. If you have Windows authentication turned on in, in for that particular website, uh, and this isn't for this tool, this is for any web API services before 7442, they would return a 403, I believe, an unauthorized, any any call from an external application would return a 403. Uh, so you have to make sure, and, and in this case it was on a power DNN server, which may, that may be the default setup is to turn on forums authentication, anonymous authentication, and Windows authentication. I had to disable Windows authentication, which for this client wasn't being used at all. For most people running websites, you're not using it. Windows authentication is for like connecting internal, uh, using internal uh, credentials, uh, don't, uh, Windows domain credentials to access the website, which is not most of the time necessary on a public facing internet site. Perfect, okay, so here, here you have uh, my tip, Scott's tip uh, with that. Uh, anything else, Scott, from your side? No, I think that's it. Just look forward to September for some new uh, video releases. Perfect. Looking forward to September and kids back to school. I cannot, I cannot uh, wait for that. Okay. <laughs> that's right. Fix. Bye, Scott. All right. All right. Until next time.